So next topic is CNF and GNF. Okay, CNF means Chomsky normal form. GNF means Grebatch normal form. For any language, any particular language, we are discussing about context-free languages, right? So for any given language, we can have more than one possible grammar. Okay, that is the same language can be generated by say G1, G2, etc. Okay, so many grammars can produce the same language. So for any given language, we can have more than one possible grammar. Okay, but the way we are representing a grammar is going to have lot of effects or lot of impacts when we are coming to the derivation. That is, if we are going to derive a string, suppose we are having a grammar and we are going to derive some string. Then the representation, that is the representation of a particular grammar is very important, very useful. If you are going to, if you want to do derivation compared to other forms. That is, if a grammar, so I already told you about in context to free grammar should not contain null production that is epsilon production or unit production etc right so if a grammar is having a uh, null production or unit production or whatever it is that is useless symbol etc left recursion etc right so if a grammar is having null production or unit production then that grammar is not suitable for the membership algorithm okay this particular grammar is not suitable for membership algorithm what is membership algorithm membership algorithm means membership algorithm it means it will tell whether a given string is a member of a given grammar okay whether a particular string is a member of a given grammar whether the grammar can generate this particular string whether it is a member whether the string is a member of this particular grammar or the language uh, the string in a particular language generated by a given grammar that is a particular grammar can generate a particular string. Okay. Whether it is a member of that particular grammar. Whether the string is a member of that particular grammar. That is a membership algorithm. So if a grammar is having null production or unit production. Then the grammar is not well suitable for the membership algorithm. So similarly every representation of given grammar is going to have some advantages. So there are different representations for a given grammar if you are taking any grammar the grammar is represented in different forms and the main representation of a context free grammar is chomsky normal form or and uh, grebatch normal form okay so first we will explain you about what is chomsky normal form so what is chomsky normal form if all the productions are of the form a gives bc or a gives small e that is single non-terminal in the LHS and in the RHS two non-terminal or a single terminal. Okay. Two variables in the right hand side or a terminal in the right hand side. Okay. So if all the productions are of the form A gives B, C or A gives A where A, B, C are non-terminals and A is a terminal. Then such productions are in the form Chomsky normal form. Okay, then what are the advantages? I told you every representation, every representation of a given grammar is going to have some advantages. Then what are the advantages of using uh, Chomsky normal form? The first advantage is length of each production is restricted. So, so what is the format of? I mean, just writing example. S is equal to e, uh, b c b gives a. Okay, so length of each production is restricted. No production can go very long and every production is having specified length. So if we are taking any production in CNF form, then every production is having some specified length. There will be a length, a particular length is there for a, a particular production. It will not go long. There will should not have any lengthy production in the uh, CNF form. Okay, everybody, every uh, production is having some specified length. So, what is the advantage of this thing? The advantage is here is that whenever we are trying to save the production, suppose we are uh, trying to save this production in a file. I am going to try, I am going to save this particular production into a file in the computer. And if we are representing that file as a data structure. We know the data structure, different types of data structure, linear, non-linear, right? So, linear data structure, suppose we are trying to store this file uh, in the form of array data structure. 
work in terms of array so we know exactly what is the maximum size of the production possible okay so if we are knowing the size of this particular file then it is very easy to represent that file okay suppose if we are having a very long production and in order to represent it in terms of array you might have to know prior the maximum length of the production so in order to represent it by using array and if you are not knowing the size of the production then it is very difficult to represent that particular production in in terms of array okay because we should know the size of the production in order to represent it by using array okay since in chomsky normal form the, the production is having a fixed length if not fixed length restricted length okay uh, in the right hand side you can see only two non terminal in the left hand side only one uh, non terminal or in the right hand side there will be only one terminal like that so the representation of each grammar here is easy okay so if we have a very long production then in order to represent in terms of array you should know what is the size of the production so if we are not using chomsky normal form then it can go any long and we can't predict now what will be the size of the production in future okay so it is always better to have a restricted form like cnf so if we are using cnf every production is having some specified length and we can easily store that particular production in a file in a computer and can be represented in for in the form of data structure a linear data structure that is array if you are not knowing the size of the production then we should know what will be the size of that production in order to represent it by using array data structure so if we are using cnf uh, the size the length of the production is restricted so we can easily represent that particular production in terms of array okay so we need this particular representation cnf for then the second advantage is derivation tree or parse tree obtained from chomsky normal form is always a binary tree so you already know the format of cnf that is a gives bc or a gives a right so if i am uh, representing it by using a derivation tree or parse tree i can represent like this or, or like this so maximum children will be 2 okay that is it is representing by using a binary tree the representation is always a binary tree okay that is any node is going to derive two children or any node going to derive only one child so it is always true that there will be at most two children so is a binary tree okay so that is a second advantage and a third advantage is the number of steps required to derive a string of length mod w is 2 into mod w minus 1 that is whenever you want to derive a particular string so if we are going to derive a string we are deriving from the root node that is we are deriving suppose this is thing so we are deriving from the starting uh, symbol okay so whenever we want to derive a string we are going to start from the root or start symbol so in every step the number of variables are going to be increased by 1 that is each step the variable is increased by 1 okay or the number of terminals increased by 1 number of non terminals will be increased by 1 or the number of terminal will be increased by 1 in every step say let's see an example as gives bc okay so single terminal see sorry single non terminal then next single non terminal is in the next step it is increased by 1 right 1 become 2 okay so a string length increased by 2 and if we are replacing it with a terminal then also a, uh, one more terminal added right number of terminals are going to be increased by 1 okay so suppose this is a string of length 1 okay and we are going to increase the size of this string w mod w okay then the number of steps required will be number of steps required will be mod w minus 1 so this is a string of length 1 and we are going to increase the size of the string mod w then the number of steps required will be mod w minus 1 that is 
after these many steps after mod w minus 1 steps i will be able to have a string whose length is equal to the input length but the entire string contains variables only so if we are deriving a particular string from the given grammar okay then the number of steps to take it to replace is mod w minus 1 plus mod w which is 2 into mod w minus 1 a little bit complicated i know but with the example i will show you how you got this one okay suppose i have a uh, grammar s gives a b a gives small a b gives small b i want to derive the string a b so what is the length of the string here two right so i am deriving the string by using this this particular grammar okay s gives a b okay so length of one then length become uh, length 1 then next become length 2 okay one way non terminal then two non terminal i am replacing capital a with small a in the next step i am ca replacing capital b with small b so i got the string i derived the string ab by using this particular grammar okay so what is the length here 2 the length of the string is 2 the derived string is having a length 2 okay so what is our equation 2 into length of the string that is 2 minus 1 which is 4 minus 1 which is equal to 3 okay so how many steps are here there are three steps okay so the number of steps to take it to replace is three similarly in this also you can see this is a grammar i am going to derive this particular string so after replacing I, my length is three so two into three minus one which is equal to five so total step is five right